right, everybody. Today we are going to be doing a health and wellness consult with Mr. Chris, who is a Fortnite esports player, um, also known as CRR in game. How's it pronounced, Chris? Is it? Do you pronounce it uh, CRR? Just CRR, yeah. Just okay. CRR. Awesome. And he's currently a player for Fnatic, um, 107k earnings. And Chris, go ahead and tell us a little bit more about uh, your journey in Fortnite. How long have you been playing? How did you end up uh, uh, getting signed with Fnatic? I just got a PC for one of my Christmas. Like, I paid towards it, and then I got. I guess I just placed my first cup and carried on playing since then. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 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 When was that? How long? How long have you been playing? Uh, a couple weeks before World Cup. Oh, okay. So you yeah. you hopped on the World Cup hype train and decided that you wanted to uh wanted yep. to do this. That's pretty sick. What games were you playing before Fortnite? Uh, COD. COD a lot mainly. Of COD? On console. Yeah, okay. didn't take game that serious. Gotcha. Well, you're taking it seriously now. Um, so go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit more about what your schedule looks like. How many hours a day are you playing? Uh, and what kind of peripheral are you playing on? Uh, I'm playing controller and I play like Main, normally I play like eight hours a day, but it can be like some days it might not play as much because there's not much to do. But now it's F and so everyone's playing like eight hours a day. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely grind season for sure. Uh, what kind of controller are you playing on? Would you mind showing it to us? Yeah, Scuff Prestige. Awesome. And you've got the paddles on the back. Yep. See, I see. I cut this paddle so it doesn't hurt my finger. You did what now? I like cut the side of the paddle off. Okay. Because where I hold it, this finger goes like underneath it, and I don't want it in the way. Gotcha. From where I used to use a different controller. I see. And uh, can you just give me a brief explanation of uh, the kind of um, issues that you've been having with your wrist? So, my wrist here and my pink, my, my uh, middle finger, because I'm spamming my uh, edits a lot. It just overall aches after a while, and then, yeah, when I, because I'm holding it, I think, because I'm holding it in a weird way. My wrist on where it Can you show us uh, what the from the side view what that kind of looks like when you hold your controller? I hold it like this, but mm. if you like, if you bring it up, I'm slightly going downwards afterwards. I see, I see, I see. Okay, um, that can definitely be a uh, issue um, with how you're holding the controller. I would definitely recommend a more neutral stance or a neutral uh, angle of your wrists. If you did something like put a pillow underneath uh, your arms, I think that could help out with that as well to kind of keep it in a more uh, straightforward uh, posture um, okay okay so other than that uh, you've been feeling some aching and tiredness in uh, the the wrist and through the middle and pinky fingers um, is that correct yep all right so I've done a little bit of an evaluation off stream here but we're gonna kind of get into uh, some of the details of what I found and um, then we're going to give you some exercises to go from there. Does that sound good? Sounds good, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about what's going on. It's basically when I'm just playing, like after a, a long time while well, playing that day, my, just, my wrist started hurting, and then also my, my hand is hard, it's always tired, my right hand. And then I, even if I rest for like two days and I won't play, my right hand will just get tired after like if I play a whole day on it, okay. no matter what. And how many hours a day are you playing? Uh, it could be any amount. Like some days it could be eight plus. Some days, depending on it, it could be like two hours. But it's normally a lot. Okay. And where do you notice that you're feeling uh, tiredness or do you ever have pain in your hand? Uh, only sometimes in the wrist, but no, it's normally just feels so tired that, like, just when I'm, like, because I have to spam, I'm controlling, I have to spam click a, but a certain button with middle finger. Okay. Like, I'll just end up not even clicking half the time, because it's just, it's just hurting, I guess. No, it's what, just tired. What kind of controller do you play on? Uh, Scuff. Okay. The PS4 Xbox. one? Uh, Xbox one. Okay. Um, can I go ahead and see how you hold your controller? It's not that bad. Okay. And where do you typically notice uh, that you're feeling tired? 
Uh, middle finger. Middle finger? Bottom middle finger, yeah. Yeah. Right through there. And is it yeah. uh, from spamming that paddle? What do you have bound to that yeah, paddle? This is confirm and pull out builds. So when I'm spamming edits, okay. I have to click it a lot. Gotcha. And then this is where it hurts on the wrist, because I'm not holding it like this. Like down here on the wrist, by here hurts. Okay, I, I see. I don't know. Pretty bad sometimes. How bad would you say that pain is? Uh, only after like I played eight hours, it just gets to the point where like I notice it. If I'm not, if I'm in a cup, I won't really notice it because I'm just playing. But I'll notice it if I'm playing like just sitting in creative. Okay. But essentially, the this tendon that goes to your middle finger here. Yeah. You see where it comes from, the blue, all the way up through yep. here? So, in order for you to keep spamming that paddle with that tendon right there, you have to work this muscle that does wrist flexion, it does this motion. Yeah, okay. That's this muscle here. And it does finger... It bends your fingers as well. Yeah, okay. So you can see it right here. So basically, what happens is that when we have a demand on our muscles that they're not necessarily prepared to handle, um, so like yep. repeatedly having to uh, press the uh, confirm edit button um, and pulling out the builds with that one hotkey, um, you're essentially stressing the muscle in a way that it's not prepared for. So you have, uh, I want you to think of it kind of like an HP bar. Um, all of your muscles and tendons have a certain amount of times that they can contract in a given amount of time before they start yep. to get irritated and um, get inflamed and cause you pain. Um, okay. So the way that we increase that HP bar is by actually performing endurance strengthening exercises. Um, so what that means is we need to repeatedly contract the muscle with a low weight. It's a little bit different than doing um, strength training where you're trying to lift a heavy weight a small yep. number of times. You're trying to lift a smaller weight um, for an extended period of time repeatedly. Um, so the way that we can do that is through um, using something like a dumbbell. Do you have a dumbbell that weighs roughly 2.2 uh, kilograms? I or... don't think so. I think my sister has one somewhere. Um, I'll have to ask. Okay. Do you think I can get be... one though. Like, I'll buy one if I have to. Right, right, right. Do you think you have something around the house that weighs roughly that? Like a big bottle of water or something? Yeah, I could definitely get a big bottle of water. Yeah, go ahead and grab one of those for me. Yeah, right. One eternity later. Hey. I feel like this ball is probably the only thing that I'm surely this way is it right? Oh yeah, yeah, Wait. yeah, for sure. Can you get a good Ooh. grasp on that? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right, so the first exercise right. that we're gonna do is going to be um, just a stretch. So I want you to do this pretty much as often as you can. Uh, do you ever have that kind of tight sensation um, in your forearm? Um, sometimes, I think. Yeah. So this is gonna be a really helpful stretch for dealing with that and what this is gonna look like is gonna be here. So you're gonna go ahead and take your hand, turn it upside down and pull back on your fingers just like that. So go ahead and give that a shot for me. Okay. And I want you to hold like it for about 30 it? seconds. Like even if, like if I feel pain or? Uh, no, it should not be pain. painful. You should feel a gentle okay. stretch. Would you mind yeah, tilting okay. the camera up so we can see your arm? There we so, go. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Like this, right? Yep, just like that. How does that feel? Uh, feels alright, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so hold that for about 30 seconds at a time. You can do it three times in a row. And you should be doing this stretch um, pretty much as often as you can. Uh, when you're getting up and taking breaks uh, during your gaming sessions, you can stand up and do this stretch to kind of relieve some of the tension of those muscles. When our muscles get overworked and they get irritated and inflamed, the first thing they'll usually do is kind of get uh, kind of get tightened down. So this is a really great way to combat that. But a lot of people think that stretching is the only answer. 
uh, for what they need to do to prevent injury and really the you have to treat the underlying cause which is kind of that uh, endurance deficit um, so let's move on to the next exercise here we're gonna be doing uh, wrist flexion isometric so this is a exercise that can be done um, to relieve pain for up to an hour um, if you notice that you are having pain in that wrist area there um, so essentially what an isometric is it's a contraction where the muscle um, isn't going anywhere so you're just kind of contracting okay. into the resistance of your other hand so I'm gonna play this video right now and you can take a look at how this works and then we'll try it out yeah. so you see how I'm not moving but I'm still contracting into the resistance of my other hand there Okay. That's exactly how that's going to work. So go ahead and put your arm on your armrest. Yeah. Yep. Do I push down? Yep. So you're going to make a fist and you're going to push down with the other hand and I want you to hold that for about 45 seconds. Am you're, I pushing down on my fist or on like... So you're pushing down hand? on your the top of your fist, so the knuckles there. Yep. The knuckles, yeah. So okay. like, just like this. Click, click on you. Yeah, I see. Okay, like this. Push down like this. Yep. Just like that. Yep. And you're not trying to like rip your arm off, but I want you to hold a moderate contraction for roughly 45 seconds. You don't need to set a timer or anything, just kind of count in your head. Yep. Yeah. Right. All right. So that's kind of an as needed thing for pain if you like really need to push through something uh, to get to the end of a session, but you should kind of use it sparingly. Um, yeah, okay. So next we're gonna actually address the underlying issues um, of the endurance deficit. And for this exercise, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, hop on Google and just pull up metronome. So just Google metronome like this. And then you should be able to set this to 50 beats per minute. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Do you hear that ticking sound? Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, and what I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have you grab that water bottle and you're gonna use it like this dumbbell. All right, okay. So every time you hear the beat, you're gonna change direction. So I want you to count in your head. So like when you hear it at the bottom, count one. When you hear it at the top, count one. When you hear it at the bottom, count two. When you hear it at the top, count two. Um, and yep. you're not moving until you hear that beat. So don't get ahead of yourself. So what I want you to do is I want you to count how many you're able to do when going in this direction, just like this. How do I hold this? That's going to be... Yeah, yeah, just like that. That's perfect. When do I stop? Uh, whenever you start to feel fatigue or pain. Really keep your elbow down on the armrest, so you can use your other hand and put it on your wrist if you need to. Now I want you to count how many of those you're able to do. I can feel pain, I think. Okay, how many was that? Like 10. Like 10, okay. So, yeah, ideally... I can feel, I can, yeah, I can feel where it normally hits now. Like I, can, I feel like I can feel down here. Right. Like, Ideally, we yeah. want to be roughly around 45 on that, assuming yeah, okay. that a uh, water bottle weighs roughly 5-ish pounds, um, or 2.26 kilograms. Um, so the ideal uh, goal for that is to kind of increase that number every single day. So that's going to be the number one um, exercise that I'm going to have you do to kind of deal with this issue. And the reason we use but the... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, okay. I just stop when it hurts. Yeah, I don't stop when I can't do it anymore, right? Right, when I would hurts. stop when you start feeling pain. Yeah, okay. Um, so, we use the metronome because there's studies that show that uh, when you use an external cue, so something like an outside sound, a beat, um, something that you're not controlling uh, to determine when you're starting your contractions, it does two things. At first, it makes all of the contractions um, consistent in when they come. Yep. So you're not kind of irregularly contracting the muscles. You have the exact same amount of contraction time, you have the exact same amount of rest time between each contraction. And secondly, um, it gets all of your uh, muscle fibers on the same page. So muscles aren't just one unit. They consist, it's kind of like a rope 
that's made of a lot of different strings. And not all of those strings um, instinctually contract at the same time to get a muscle contraction. So what we do when we use a metronome is we're getting the part of the brain that's responsible for contracting muscles on board with all of the individual muscle fibers and it creates a stronger rope to pull tension through. So it's all mechanical um, issues when you're talking about muscle dysfunction and weakness. So the more muscle fibers we can recruit at the same time, the stronger that contraction is going to be and the less irritation you're going to have on individual fibers and the less um, swelling you're going to have inside of the tendon and the muscle um, and the less pain you're going to have ultimately. And that weak feeling that you uh, express that you're feeling is kind of related to that sort of early stages of tendon pain um, and tendinopathy essentially or tendinitis yeah. in kind of more uh, common normie terms if you will okay yeah. so that's going to be um, the exercise for all of the muscles that run through your wrist there and control your middle finger that's pressing that paddle and then I have one more bonus exercise for you that's going to involve uh, the muscles on the pinky side of the wrist and yeah. they're responsible for doing this motion here um, and that can just help uh, support um, some of those muscles of the uh, forearm that run down into your fingers. These muscles don't specifically run down into the fingers, but they're support muscles. So I want you to do this one as well as kind of an add-on bonus. So you're going to hold uh, the water bottle kind of just like this. And you're going to yep. pull up and backwards just like that. And you're going to be following the beat in the exact same way. So I don't know if you can tilt your camera up, stand up, and kind of show us that one real quick. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Honestly, it's my fingers though. Wait, that bothers your I fingers. I can just do it with the handle. I can just yeah, do yeah, yeah. Just handle, do it like though. the handle, like that. Yep. Yep, that's perfect. Can you tilt sideways for us? Well, I mean, actually, I don't know. Yeah, I go yeah, yeah, perfect. There we go. Wait, chilling. My man has all the fanatic gear. Mate, they sent me everything. Yeah. I got it. Same thing, you're counting to fatigue. If I'm a betting man, I'm willing to bet that you're able to do this a little bit longer than the other one because this isn't these aren't the exact muscles that are involved, but uh, they are support muscles. Yeah. Feel it now. Okay, let's go ahead and call it there. Alright. Any rough estimate of how many that was? No idea. Okay. It was definitely well, a whole lot it. more yeah. uh, than yeah, the, the curls that you were able to do. So, those muscles are roughly the same size. Um, so, that's kind of just a testament to how much uh, weaker those flexion muscles are than the ones that do that movement, which is called ulnar deviation, in case anybody was wondering. Um, yep. So those are going to be uh, the exercises that I think you should be doing to kind of deal with this. Um, tendon pain um, is based on uh, endurance deficits, like we talked about, and it takes roughly six to eight weeks um, to build functional strength gains. So if you do these exercises every day, um, you can kind of expect this problem to... Uh, resolve in about six to eight weeks um, so I think you should do these exercises six days a week take one day off to rest um, yep. and you should never push past five out of ten pain with any of these um, other things okay. that can be helpful include stuff like uh, icing your forearms for about 20 minutes a day um, you can use kind of a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or any kind of a ball uh, to do some forearm massage. So if you put it down here, you can take this part of your forearm and put it on the ball like that and just kind of roll back and forth like this, kind of putting pressure on tender spots and finding where uh, it's sore. That can be okay. helpful. Um, but the only thing that's going to fix this problem is strengthening your tendons in a way that mimics um, how you're using them. So kind of that low load, high repetition um, strengthening. So I like to do this thing where after I've kind of explained what's going on, I like to hear back from uh, you uh, 
for you to explain it back to me so I can kind of get a gauge on how much, uh, where you're at with the, the understanding. So if you could go ahead and explain to me what you got going on, uh, I'd love to hear it. Explain what's wrong with me? Yep. Okay, so because I'm overusing my middle finger, it's affecting the whole, I think it's a tendon or muscle, whatever mm -hmm. it was, down my arm. And it's like a stamina bar, basically. I've overused it every day because I haven't trained it to be stronger, I guess. So I need to work it up so that I can use it as much as I want. And my pinky is kind of the same, really. It's just my wrist it needs to be, it needs to be uh, trained to be stronger so it can deal with being used over and over more. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Okay. All right. And we'll check back with you in a couple weeks and see how you're doing. Other than that, uh, hope you do uh, well in the FNCS. Thanks a lot. I All right, man. It.